Hey, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here at RSA Conference in Moscone in San Francisco. CUBE's four days of live coverage. I've got two great guests here, Casey Ellis, the founder and CTO of BugCrowd, and Dave Jerry, who's the CEO. Guys, BugCrowd doing great. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thanks so much for having thanks us. Thanks. So this is day two, I guess, or day one. Yeah. It feels like a day one, because it's kind of a big kickoff. Yesterday was the yeah. early keynotes, or the evening keynotes. Um, the security industry's changed. You guys are the center of it. You got a deal with open AI, we'll get into it. You got some hard news here. But before we get into it, take a minute to explain what the company does, what, how you guys started, why you exist. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, Bug Crowd obviously started not in, a, in America, it's the accident that you're hearing now, um, started from Sydney, Australia. Um, but really, the idea behind it was this, this kind of fundamental idea that, you know, security is a human problem, right? The idea of like someone leaving the front door open, someone else exploiting that, that predates the internet by thousands of years. We just kind of sped it up. So how do you connect more humans more efficiently into answering security questions that, that people have? And you know, coming from the white hat hacker community, that's kind of where I, yeah. I grew up. I knew that I had a bunch of peers that wanted to help but hadn't had the invite, hadn't been plugged in. Yeah. So that's where it started, was like creating a platform that could harness that yeah. potential and hook it up with the market. Yeah, and you guys also wrote a great wave too of the white hat hacking, uh, collective intelligence, community participation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the bug bounties are high too, so people can make some good bank. 100%. So there's a yeah. business model behind it. Yeah, well it's valuable, like they, they, they have valuable skills and the information that they're finding is valuable as well, right? It's, it's hard to find unless you have the right skills and if a bad guy finds it first, bad things happen. So right. yeah, paying for it's a good idea. And so you guys got some good cutting edge stuff with open AI, I want to get into the AI side of it, because I'm sure that will pay a big scale part of it. But you have some hard news, you guys got some news here at RSA. What's the news, what's the big story? Yeah, we're really excited to be here. So we announced for the first time ever that we're selling pen testing entirely online. Mm. So now our customers can actually go to our website <laughs> and with a few clicks, not only purchase, but actually set up and deploy a pen test, which in our view really starts to democratize the access mm. to pen testing, right? Yeah. We know customers need it, and we're super excited to have that launch last week. Yep. Finally, someone does <laughs> pen test as a service. The biggest racket in the history of cloud native agile <laughs> of all right. time. <laughs> hey, let's do a pen test, pay me 50,000, and then you push some new code and everything's changed. Exactly That's right. Like, like, this has kind of the, been the old school reality. It seemed like it was like a, based on an old model. And then I, I also heard that, well, that was the one problem I've been mm. hearing. I want to get you guys to react to that. <laughs> Secondly is that people that were doing the pen test were like, I'm way more skilled than this mm. shit. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So you, that's the two dynamics. You're spot on on both sides. Like, the, you know, the problem with the pen test industry, from my perspective, I, like the company I was doing before Bugcrowd was literally a pen testing company. That's where I got the idea that like many people could probably do a better job than a single person, right? Because math. Um, but you know, it's it's one of those things where where pen testers aren't the yeah. problem. It's the pen testing. It's how it's done. Exactly. It's so inefficient, and there hasn't really been a reason to change it. Now that we've got the ability to plug the right talent in, to your second point, right? Why yeah. not do that? Like, make the whole thing faster and more effective for both sides. Yeah. So, so first of all, congratulations. Check this out. Pen testing as a service. It's already a winner in my mind because I think everyone's been complaining about it. It's one of those little nuances that when you're in a business deal, or you're in a mm. partnership with someone else, APIs are talking to someone else. 100%. There's always the AppSec review kind yeah, of right. thing going on, and and with Agile, you, if you're pushing code all the time, shifting left, you're going to be always changing the requirements, and you got software supply chain right around yep. the corner. So. I mean, this is a nightmare scenario if you don't have this tool. Yeah, yeah. and so, it's it all okay. about reducing the friction to getting to those answers to your So point. obviously I'm awesome. pretty much biased on this. I'm, <laughs> and interview's over, no. Um, <laughs> we agree, so okay. whatever. It's, it's already great, so <laughs> yeah. win, winner, winner, winner out of the gate. Mm. Now take me through the, like, how it works in terms of like certification. Uh, if someone does the pen test, the, if someone might say, well, what about on the other side? I'm yeah. going to need to have it updated. If more code comes, I need mm. trust. When you give the pen test results to a partner, what mm. happens next? How, take us through the, how it works. Yeah, so I think what's really cool about this is we're leveraging all of this latent creativity that exists mm. in the security expert community, right? That's really what Casey founded the business on, was how do we connect the right researcher at the right time with the right problem? Yep. And as you talked about, pen testers don't want to be bogged down on scoping. They want to ultimately go out and perform a test when and get stuff. paid to be able to do that <laughs> yeah. and find critical yeah. vulnerabilities. And when customers come on and they join with us, we match them with the right pen tester based on the skill set of the tester and based on the customer's environment. Yeah. We then immediately can deploy a test in a matter of hours versus weeks or months in the previous models. Yeah. And then from there, results are shared real time back into the platform that both we're reviewing from a QA perspective, mm. but then our customers also get in real time versus yeah. waiting just for a report to be released yeah. at the end of the test. So we're actually helping to speed up not just the access to the testing, 
but the access to the remediation and the yeah. mitigation, which is the most important. And, it's, yeah. and it's, it sounds like a great extension to your existing business. You got uh, you right. got a two-sided marketplace, a yeah. talent, yeah. and yeah. technology and progress and workflows. It's it, it, that's actually one of the things I love about this announcement because I think we're often seen as a as a bug you know, bug crowd. We didn't invent bond disclosure or bug bounty, but the idea of putting a platform in the middle to connect supply with demand that was we started that off. Um, and it's it's uh, it frustrates me every now and then to hear it referred to as a bug bounty platform yeah. vertical because it's not actually a bug bounty problem that we're solving. Like yeah. bug bounty is just the most obvious expression of, of what we do as a as a platform as an engine. Well, product market fit doesn't define a company. I mean, unless you're Twitter and they can't well, change the product. <laughs> turns out if you're creating a category, people can get kind of confused. So like yeah. going out right. and talking about all of the different things, like a multi-solution platform, this yeah. is another solution in that, so that works well. Let's, well. let's talk about the progression. Obviously, when you get the beachhead with the bug bounty platform, if you want to call it a tool, but yep. you innovated on that, you guys did more. Take us through the progression, now you have platform of testers, you got mm -hmm. tools and technology you're using, I imagine. Yeah. Underlying machine learning, a deal with open AI is pretty relevant. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, that's, no, that's not a you know, small fee, because I know they're busy too. They are, What's they, the they, deal are, with open they AI? are very busy. I think that goes back to the speed um, advantage that Dave yeah. was talking about before, because yeah. that applies across everything that we do. Um, yeah. Yeah, security moves fast, and if a company moves fast, security needs to move faster with it. And, what and is the deal with OpenAI specifically? You guys do a little technology transfer. You guys are doing some service for them. What's yeah, the deal? Yeah, so, so the part, so the part that's public that you know everyone everyone started talking about a couple of weeks ago when it launched is we we've, we've basically launched their bug bounty program on our platform. So so what they're doing is going out to the open internet and saying, hey, come and look at our stuff for security issues. If you're first to find a unique issue, you get paid. The more severe that issue is, the more we'll pay you. Um, yeah. So they're basically going out to the entire you know, audience of potential people that can actually be experts and the actual experts that are already there and saying, help us out. Yeah, and I think the talent side of it's really huge too because when you start getting into remote work, and again, yeah. you must see a lot of going on there, a lot of matchmaking there. Mm -hmm. Are there other services that are coming around for the table for you guys that are, that are looking good? Yeah, so I think ultimately when you look at the platform and the researchers that we have, we're ultimately there to help pair the researchers to drive an outcome mm. on behalf of our customers. What those outcomes are really are limitless, right? Ultimately, anything our customer yeah. wants done from a security researcher standpoint can be done by leveraging this platform. So we're looking at a number of different ways to start to expand the platform even further and continue to drive forward this premise of how do we make sure that our paying customers have access mm -hmm. to the right talent when they need it? Yep. Because these are folks that you just fundamentally can't hire, yep. right? These are yep. the best in class hackers across the planet, and we give them the ability to match this using our platform. Exactly. We were on the, uh, we were on, a, I was on an interview yesterday with Amazon Web yeah. Services, Merritt Bear, she's a character, super smart. But of course, she's colorful, she's all the Marvel characters. You get the bad guys <laughs> and you got yeah. Clash of the Titans. Yeah. This right, the world spot. is yep. different. The attack surface area, I mean, even we had someone from Sonatype on, we talked about Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's unsecure by default. And it, okay, const it's and like, it constantly yeah. changes too. Like we, we, we weren't talking about AI as a security thing in this way six months ago. Right. Yeah, you know, like when we first started the company, we weren't talking about automotive security, but then we started in 2015. There's been other examples, IoT, whatever else. It's always changing because tech changes and bad guys update what they're doing to attack the tech. So like yeah, our so job is to be in that gap. Ultimately, this comes back to how do we help our customers disrupt the adversary? Exactly. Right. That adversary is going to change. It's yeah. going to adapt. Yeah. But how do we fundamentally help them start to? So you guys got a lot of funding. What's the What's the platform look like? Can you share a little bit of the secret sauce? Um, uh, That's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a lot of the work. That was a trick question on the queue. Yeah, we were kind of we were kind of joking a little bit uh, before we started around kind of the data, right? And the data really is the secret for us. So we have over 10 years of human tag data. Mm -hmm. So think about this as all the telemetry data of vulnerability information, researcher information, right? All of this amazing intelligence that we've been able to build, and we've been doing this for years, an ML and AI layer where we can now match the right researcher with the right program at the right time. And what we're seeing from a result standpoint is fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. Customers are finding 2x the amount of critical vulnerabilities, researchers are making more money. Mm -hmm. So as we start to think about the flywheel effect of the platform and how do you keep a marketplace engaged, yep. those are two really big critical yeah. pillars. So that's something that from a platform standpoint we're really excited about and now we're looking at how do you continue to leverage that data to make our customers more successful. And the benefit to the customer is that you have historical context to look at patterns or DNA of attacks. 
I think, right. yeah, DNA of attacks, but also like, what what's the traits of a researcher that best fit? Got it, bingo. So, you know, the way I describe it, it's literally like a dating website for people that break computers, right? <laughs> like, and the thing about that is that the ML layer learns historically in terms of what traits actually have the highest probability of romance yeah. or finding a vulnerability, right? And you that just continues very to improve. improve. Really great business model because you know that's the like putting the right person mm. in the right place, at the right time. That's the hot pot. It makes the difference between right. going yep. out of business or solving that problem. Well, most importantly, drives more value for our customers. Yep. Yeah. Right, helps them find vulnerabilities faster exactly. and helps again keep these researchers as engaged as possible. What was the motivation behind the pen testing? More of a obvious low hanging fruit. Knock that down. It's easy. Um, people are hate them. Hate doing them. Was there demand? What was the decision tree on that? Yeah, I'll let you take this first. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, right. yeah, I was going to say, hey, you as well. Want to do that. <laughs> yeah. um, initially, like in, in starting the company, it was literally to, to basically, there's so much fat in, in, in the pen test industry. It's like, you know, the people that are selling it and benefiting from that yeah. fat, they've got no reason to change it, but that means the user loses at the end of the day because they can't be getting you know, the most important It was there to be disrupted. Yeah, it's, and it's in your wheelhouse. I, I was looking at it thinking, like someone's going to call BS on this at some point, because yeah. it's, it's so yeah. in balance, so I might as well be that person, and like yeah. we've really been building and you had that the, it was wheelhouse for you with the, with the, with the people, the talent. Yeah, yeah no, bug sure. crowds platform that's, that's where I came from. Fit for it. And then bug bounty early on, this is back in 2013, like people didn't, you know, 10 years on, like the idea that a hacker can be a helpful person, like a locksmith, or not just a burglar, like we get that now. That wasn't true in 2013. So the easiest way to explain that was to point at Facebook and Google and say, hey, they're doing this, they're not insane. Like maybe yeah. there's more to hackers than you might assume. So, um, and then Bug Bounty caught on as, a, as an independent product. So that's kind of how it all got started. Well, maybe we can use your system so we can get the best Cube alumni to be on our show at the right time. Yeah. When the right. topics are, you know, instant chair right there. Yeah, yeah. Crowdmatch, crowd, crowdmatch is a tech concept, you know, just in terms of how do you answer a question? How do you yeah. put the question in the best possible place to get an answer? Fascinating. It's very flexible in that sense, so it's pretty Fascinating. fun. Any, yeah. any plans to go outside of security? Obviously security is where you're at now. Is the strategy to go adjacent on the beachhead and go deeper or Go broader. What's the what's the what's the strategy here now? Yeah, so we're we're entirely focused on the security industry, right? We have no intent to go outside of that. Now, when we think about security, is a big market, right? Where else do we start to look? <laughs> a lot at? more fat out there. Pen testing <laughs> was the the first kind of adjacency that, that we went down, and and there's a lot more for us to go do. We're excited mm. to do that. We're excited to leverage the capabilities and the underpinnings of the platform to be able to do that. And again, we, like I said earlier, we have a lot that's going to be coming out shortly that, that we're really excited about. Yeah. All right, final segment, this is super fun because you mentioned open AI. AI is hot, everyone's seeing it. Yeah. The whole world is exposed to chat GPT, so magic is there. There's still some issues, but data drives everything. Proprietary data is going to be the values. No, everyone's weighing in now, finally, mm -hmm. on that. It's only going to get better. It's going to be feed the AI, merge data models together, large language, multimodal, foundational models. This is perfect for you guys. What's your strategy there? What's your vision? How do you see AI emerging for your business? And then how do you see it just generally categorically in the industry? Yeah, so I think for us, AI has always been a core part of who we are and what we do, right? We talk about CrowdMatch being kind of the first output of really leveraging the data that we have in the platform. And for us, and in, in the seat I sit in, I'm looking at it from two angles. The first being, how do we make our internal teams more efficient mm -hmm. to get things done faster and have our folks work on higher value problems to go solve? And then the flip side of that is, how do we help surface more valuable intelligence to our customers even faster? Mm -hmm. And that's really where we believe that tapping into this 10 plus year history of data that's been tagged, that's uh, incredibly uh, easily accessible, that's where we believe the value yeah. driver is going to be. For and you have that 100%. durable business and you have the data behind it. That's what right. about your yeah. vision for data? Where do you see data going? And why should people not be afraid of it? Why should people not be afraid of it? That's a fun one. I think... Um, I mean, a lot of CEOs are poo-pooing. I, I think if you don't honestly, read back to your business I, right now, I think having, right. I think having a healthy respect for the power that it has is a good thing, but if it, t if it converts into fear, then that's useless because you freeze up. You're not actually... Yeah. Yeah, you're only thinking about the potential downside, not the benefit, right? So that side of it, I think, is actually kind of you know, a valid way to think about it. I mean, data data for us, you know, I think about all of this, the automation side, all that kind of thing, the analogy I love is yeah. the Iron Man suit, right? <laughs> like the suit, the suit without the human is dumb. It's not as smart as it can be because it doesn't have that creative flair right. that can adjust what, the, what its programs know how to do, right? That's the, the teaching layer. But the human without yeah. the suit is weak. 
So you put them together, you know, that to me is just the continuous evolution of, of how this is going to grow. It's actually AI and, and humans working in partnership to make each other better going and forward. If you look at all the killer use cases, the humans yeah. are actively involved and or we're involved in getting the data, yep. clean data, yeah. into the yep. system working. Well, that brings up a good point. So pr prompt engineering is, everyone's thrown that around. Yep. Prompt um, operations has been kicked around. Now I'm hearing prompt tuning. I just read a paper on prompt tuning. Mm -hmm. which is more software driven, and yeah. once you get down the large language, it just takes its own healing, mm -hmm. self-healing kind of model. Mm -hmm. That's basically calling, it's almost like calling a procedure. You're, you're yep. sending data into a data set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a call. Yeah. That, to me, that's coding. Yeah. So the question is, will developers flip the script and code data? They, they already what? are. Right. Like, they already are. Like, it, 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 the most interesting thing about um, chat GPT coming out and making this whole idea available and easy to access to a large group of people at the same time. So the first thing a hacker does is takes that, looks at everything that they're doing, tips it all upside down, and tries to figure out how they could break it and make it better. So like what we're seeing is them using chat GPT to improve their, their attack workflows, yeah. right? Yeah, they're, they're and then phishing are perfect. Yeah, but it's not so, phishing is a use case, it's not one that we see because phishing's, you know, what are the big What are the big hacks right now bad. on ChatGPT? What, what are the bad guys using the AI for right now? What are the, yeah, well, and this is not this is not ChatGPT specific. I think yeah. this is like machine learning, AI, NLP. Yeah. It's, it's been in use for a long time. It's accelerating now, everyone's talking about it. I think phishing's probably the main one. Um, so, you know, the ability to, to basically trick a human um, at scale, you know, it, it's interesting because there's been studies to show that show that um, AI generated phishing emails are less believable, but the thing is you can do 10x the number of them, right? Yeah. And you make it up on the on the volume side. So that's that's happening a lot. Um, there's other stuff as well, but I think that's the most common one that people are talking about and seeing. Well, I got you here. I love having founders on too because the entrepreneurial activity is very high right now. Yeah. If you were going to start a company right now and you had a clean sheet of paper, you sit on the beach somewhere <laughs> and thinking about new idea, right. what would you do? Like, what would you? Oh what God. would your mindset be? What would you be attacking? What would be? With AI, knowing that you could do more now for product market fit, I mean, you could get mid journey to your a graphics. Dangerous question. Yeah, yeah um, look, I, I mean, my, my entrepreneurial recipe in general is how do you connect latent value with unmet demands? And how can you use things that create efficiency in the middle to, to that's the fundamental of the value of the business, but where are the big opportunities to do that? So that, that would be the recipe that I'd use. I love, like, frankly, you know, the, the financial downturn, COVID, all of the like, negative things that have happened, not to say that they're good. But chaos is a ladder, in a sense. Like I, I think for security, if it's a depressed environment, people are thinking about risk more natively. In, in a bull market, like, yeah, maybe nothing will happen. So it's actually a good time to be in security and be a founder, because it's easy to have the conversation. And I think you know everything's being disrupted, and, and a lot of things are disruptable yeah. in, a, in a kind of unique way in this period of time. So those would be the things I would think yeah. about. What would pop out of that? God only knows, I've got a laundry <laughs> list of things that could work, but I'm kind of enjoying working on BugProud right now, so I don't <laughs> think about it too much. <laughs> the best thing about being the founder and, and, is you can do a lot of things, you got a lot of latitude, you can right. start a little, little sandbox anytime you want. What's the strategy for you guys, what's next? What, 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 what put the plug in for the company, we've got a couple of minutes left. Hmm. Yeah, so I think what's really cool with BugCrowd today is what we do really matters, right? Not only are we helping solve a really big security problem hmm. for the industry, but we're also doing so in a meaningful way for the folks as you talked about earlier in the marketplace, right? Yeah, this yeah. is a way for, for folks that don't have access to uh, the roles and the, the opportunities that other people do to earn meaningful income yeah. and, and we're growing really quickly, yeah. right? So that's where we're really excited is this business is hot, the market is growing incredibly yeah. fast and we're hiring 30 to 40 people in the next couple months. Yeah, so I mean, and, you, and what's great about your business model, you don't need to have the customer change much to adopt you. Exactly mm. right. You don't have to have something 100%. be ripped out to plug in. Right. 100%. You're instantly adding yep. value out of the gate. Yeah, and, and that's a big part of how we design yeah. products. It's like, let's take let's take the way that you're consuming this thing and have that change as little as possible, make it a million times better. Well, awesome <coughs> uh, news on the pen test as a service, that's the big news yeah. here. Thank and you. just in general, a great model for security, open, open's happening better. Yep. The more open it is, the better it is. Absolutely, 100%. Dave, Casey, thanks for coming on, appreciate sure, it. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. Here at the Cube, uh, Bug Crab, Bickett and Hall happened here on the Cube at RSA 2023. I'm John Furrier, we'll be right back. <laughs>